Hi everyone, welcome to the next herping video we're going to put on this channel. This is about a trip to Croatia that I took last year. We uh, we stayed in Vodis. Now, this wasn't a herping trip by any means. I think the herping trips do a lot more stuff up north and explore the islands, but this wasn't a herping trip, so we didn't find as much. It won't be as long a video as a Portugal one I put up, and I'm not going to do it day by day because that was a bit long. So I'll put things up in the order at which we found them and uh, show you what we got throughout the week. For this trip, we flew into Split and then travelled to Vodis for the hotel. During this trip, there was a significant heatwave on as it was July and temperatures were approaching 40 degrees. As a result of this, I snuck out for herping mostly in the evenings as I found that was the only time things were really moving out of the heat of the day. Most of the herping on this trip took place around Vodis, Sibinyek and we had significant success in the Koket National Park. The first species we got before even taking the luggage out of the car were these Italian wall lizards Podarchus circulus. We found these all over the place throughout the week and they're clearly very habituated into the urban habitats. If anyone's interested in the taxonomy, the specimens from here are the Campestris subspecies. Of course, being of the Podarchus genus, this species is oviparous and the females lay about 2 to 8 eggs. They take invertebrates and plant matter just like any other wall lizards, however the difference between these and other wall lizards I've observed was these are quite arboreal and we actually found them, not spooked or anything, living up to 10 foot high in trees. The next notable thing that happened this day was we unfortunately cruised this DOR dead Montpellier snake, something we never like to see, but it does happen. I actually really thought this specimen was alive so I gave it the full swerve and emergency stop before unfortunately finding out that this was a dead specimen. While on a meal out that night in Vodis, I looked at every single lamppost and hotel light in the hope of finding geckos with absolutely no luck. And then back in the car park of our own hotel, we actually found this lovely gravid female and a few other specimens. This was the only time this week that we saw this usually common species of gecko. The next morning, sadly, we found another dead Montpellier snake, becoming a bit of a habit for the trip. While driving home the next night, we found this beautiful Herman's tortoise. This was the first tortoise I'd ever seen in the wild, so to drive past it just walking down the side of the road was awesome. And then I spent the next sort of 10-15 minutes lying on my stomach, waiting for it to come out of its shell, hoping to get a good photograph. As awesome as they are, it's important to remember when working with tortoises never to pick them up, as the first thing they'll do is urinate. This really dehydrates the animal, and it takes them a lot of time to recoup this precious resource. My favourite find of this whole trip was this juvenile dye snake we found in Koka National Park. This specimen was found in the water, which isn't surprising in this heat as it's the most aquatic member of the Natrix genus. These aquatic snakes hunt fish in shallow water, and if you want to see that happen in Living Zoology YouTube channel, I have a fantastic video they've just put up of this happening. In this picture you can see how I found the snake sitting in the water. I had to scuttle down the bank and catch it, but unfortunately I spooked a few frogs into the water which scared the snake. Luckily I managed to grab a handful of weed and the snake as well. This national park also gave us our best opportunity to photograph these marsh frogs, a species we'd seen throughout the week but this was the best chance we got to actually get some really good views of them. This species are hugely variable and come in lots of different grades of brown, grey and green but they all seem to exhibit this dorsal stripe down the back. These frogs are very versatile and we found them in still water as well as right next to the really fast rapids in the flowing water. Unfortunately, on the drive back from the National Park, we found this dead four-line snake. This was really gutting because it would have been a great find for me. After spotting and photographing some non-native red-eared sliders, we then moved on to look for some more of the native species. Another evening walk turned up a fantastic highlight of the trip for me. This lovely male Balkan green lizard was spotted right in classic habitat in sort of rocky hedgerow terrain and I was able to sneak up behind a wall and actually sit watching these for quite a while which is unusual for these skittish animals. Luckily because I was hidden behind a wall the animal could carry on with its natural behaviours and I was able to snap some photos of it feeding on these sort of locust cricket things that we found out there. This male had lost its tail at some point, as it only had about a third left at the base. This can happen through the territorial disputes with other males, or through attempted predation. At this point in the trip, we found this half-smashed tortoise. Now I read up on this, and it turns out this is from golden eagles dropping them so they can smash them open to feed on them. 
While searching the reedy sides of a lake, we unfortunately found this dead toad, as well as a lot of specimens of Natrix Natrix Persa, which unfortunately I wasn't able to catch to get any pictures. What we did manage to get were these agile frogs, which we found living alongside Pelophylax. These beetle specialists are listed as vulnerable on the IUCM red list. One of our last notable finds was this European pond terrapin, a very very shy species that I was quite surprised at how fast they could swim and dive into cover when spooked. One of our last finds was this female Hermes tortoise which we found crossing the road right smack bang in the middle of our lane. We jumped out and helped this one across because we'd already seen a few squash specimens and we really didn't want this to happen to this one. I was really surprised at the difference of behaviour between this and the first specimen we encountered. This one was really really active and just kept walking whereas the other one would barely come out of its shell. So to conclude, I think we actually did very very well considering that heatwave and considering the actual amount of time and effort I put into herping which wasn't very much considering like the nature of the trip we're on. Now, Croatia is a very herpetologically diverse country. It has great species richness in, in terms of herps and it's very consistent throughout the country. So there is, as a result of this, a lot of species that we missed. Notable ones being Vipera, Amadites, Ursini, things like that. Uh, there were three snake species that I saw and didn't actually either catch or photograph or for whatever reason, so they haven't been included in this video. But what we did get was really exciting, most of which was new to me, I'd never seen that stuff before. And, and I really enjoyed herping more Eastern Europe, which is something I hadn't done before, so I'm really happy with that. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you learned a thing or two. I'm sorry there wasn't more species in, I hope it wasn't too long. If you, if you liked it, please watch the next one, please like and subscribe. Any comments or feedback or questions, feel free to pop them below. And uh, I hope to see you next time. Thanks.